You're listening to The Cash Podcast, creating affluence, success, and happiness with your financial surgeon, Adam Coach, president and portfolio manager at Libertas Wealth Management Group at LibertasWealth.com. Happy February, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful month so far. Today, we're going to be talking about a really interesting, not so well-known tip on how to save money in taxes when you work for a company where you have the ability to buy company stock inside your 401k. Um, so company stock inside your 401k, how to save money on taxes, and really some mistakes or one big mistake, I suppose, uh, that you just should not make if you're one of these lucky few who just happens to work for a company where you own company stock inside your 401k plan. But first, as always, just a few housekeeping items. If this is your first time listening or watching, then thank you as always for joining us. The Cash Podcast is produced weekly, and as stated in the intro, Cash stands for creating affluence, success, and happiness, and that's always my mission. My hope is for you to learn a little bit more on each and every episode so that you become more successful, wealthier, happier, and more educated than you were before you started listening today. So please come back often. Feel free to subscribe because we're both on YouTube and iTunes. Uh, in addition, you can follow me on Twitter at Adam Koch, as well as Instagram at Financial Surgeon. We're on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Libertas Wealth. And then we're also on LinkedIn as well if you want to look me up there. And last but not least, all links, visuals, charts, and other educational resources are always available on our website. Although today we're just going to be talking for the most part. I am going to be putting the numbers up on the screen, but you really don't need to see the screen uh, to understand the numbers. So let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, as always, I like to start with a quote, and this is a fun one today. Uh, the, the quote goes, we have what it takes to take what you have. And this was a suggested IRS motto, anonymous. <laughs> we have we have what it takes to take what, to take what you have. We have what it takes to take what you have. So uh, I don't know if uh, the IRS really has a marketing department or not, but if they did, I suppose this might be a good slogan. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about. We're talking about taxes today. Some ways to save taxes, especially again, uh, if you have company stock inside your 401k. Uh, specifically, what we're talking about is something called net unrealized depreciation, or just to keep this super, super simple and short, we just call it NUA. Um, again, not very well known, but this is how it works. If company stock is held inside your 401k, many times you can save huge on your tax bill. And when I say huge, it's all relative. Obviously, the more stock you own, um, the lower the cost basis, the, uh, the larger the market value of the stock today or in the future for that matter, the more you can save. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so uh, let's keep this simple. So uh, first of all, when you take money out of a 401k, most of you probably know that you're going to be paying taxes at whatever your ordinary income tax rate happens to be at the time of withdrawal, whether that's you know when you're working, when you're retired. Um, and when you're retired, of course, it all depends, your tax rate depends on how much earned income you have, retirement income, how that retirement income is taxed, and so on. So normally when you take money out of a 401k, you're gonna pay income tax. Um, even if you roll that money over to an IRA, a traditional IRA, a rollover IRA, um, obviously, this is not a taxable event, so when you move your 401k into an individual retirement account, that's what IRA stands for, then the entire balance moves over to the IRA, tax deferred, no penalty, no taxes. Um, the only caveat, I suppose, is that you've got to do it within 60 days, um, and I, if I threw in another little caveat, sometimes IRA rollovers will take place. Um, and the delivering institution, in other words, the company that sends the money to the receiving institution will sometimes send uh, a, a 1099, you know, saying that you took the money out when obviously you didn't. 
if you rolled it over. Uh, the reason they do that is because they need to cover their butts. Um, they don't know if you spent the money or not, if it's an indirect rollover, which means if the money came to you first and then you're, it's your responsibility to give it to the receiving institution or put it in the IRA. If you don't do that, of course, you know, you gotta pay tax. So what they do is they send that 1099 out and then all you have to do is show your tax preparer, your CPA, or if you do your own taxes, just make sure you keep a copy of the statement that shows that you rolled it over and then later on in the year, you'll get what's called a 5498 and it won't really matter anyway, but I digress. So again, um, whenever you take money out of a 401k, tax it income. Whenever you take money from a 401k, when you leave your job or when you uh, retire, um, that 401k can be rolled over, obviously, to an IRA, like I said, without any tax consequence. And then it, when you take money out of the form, out of the IRA, I'm sorry, when you take money out of the IRA, it's also taxed at ordinary income. And you know, since all the money that you've ever put away, and this is the thing, when since all the money you've put away into this 401k is pre-tax, you know, tax deductible, all withdrawals are obviously taxed at whatever your income tax rate is at any given time at the time of withdrawal. So the way that NUA works, again, net unrealized depreciation, is NUA is treated at a preferential capital gains tax rate instead of income tax, which is obviously, in most cases, lower. So we're going to use a 15% capital gains rate uh, today, just in my example, and then we're going to use a 22% income tax rate, which I think is pretty conservative. Um, a good majority of the people who own company uh, company stock in their 401k are probably going to be paying more than 22% in taxes. Uh, in fact, a lot of them are probably paying north of 30%, you know, 32, 35% in taxes. So um, just want to use, again, conservative numbers just to make sure that all of this makes sense. But obviously, the higher your tax rate, the more this makes sense. So let's talk about... Um, kind of the qualifications. So first and foremost, it's important to understand this only applies to stock of the company for which you are employed. So if you work for Cardinal Health, then it would be your Cardinal Health stock. If you work for Wells Fargo, like we have a client um, who works for Wells Fargo, we are uh, actually just working on this recently. Um, she's not ready to retire yet, but when she is, we will likely be affecting NUA, unrealized depreciation, to help her keep her tax bill as low as possible on that distribution from the 401k. So you have to work for a company where the company stock is inside your 401k, you know, for the company you work for. Um, second of all, Roth IRAs brokerage accounts, um, Roth 401ks, they do not qualify for NUA. They don't qualify for the strategy for two reasons. Well, with Roth IRAs, first of all, they're already after tax, it's tax free. So there really wouldn't be any reason to try and you know lower your withdrawal tax rate because you're not paying any taxes anyhow. Um, and then with brokerage accounts, if you have after tax money, in your 401k or as part of your retirement plan package at work, you have uh, you know after-tax money, uh, then obviously it wouldn't make any difference uh, whether you used NUA or not because the benefit here is going to be all about that pre-tax money. It's about the money you've never been taxed on. And in order to qualify, you have to, um, the taxes first of all have to be paid on at ordinary income, so at your income rate, on the cost basis immediately at the time that we affect NUA. So when we affect this strategy, when we implement this strategy, that's when the taxes have to be paid on the cost basis only. Just quickly to define what cost basis means, cost basis is simply the total amount that you have paid for the stock. So if over the course of time, you have $400,000 worth of company stock, but your money came out of your paycheck to pay for 200,000 of it, and it's grown to 400, then your cost basis is 200, and the growth is 200, which would total obviously uh, 40,000. So taxes paid at ordinary income on the cost basis right away when we affect NUA. Uh, second of all, the entire 401k has to be distributed within one year. That includes the other investments you have in the 401k as well. So you can't just take the company stock out and then leave the rest of the money in the 401k forever. You have to take the whole thing out within a year. Um, also, you have to have left the company within, I'm sorry, you have to have left the company or retired, so change jobs or retired. You have to meet the minimum required retirement age as defined by your plan document, uh, which you would get from HR and benefits, and we could look at that for you. Um, you would have to qualify for total disability, um, in other words, a hardship, 
or the owner has to have passed away. And what I mean by that is let's just say somebody had a 401k, they have company stock in it, um, and then maybe it was uh, somebody's spouse and we're trying to take advantage of the tax, uh, the NUA tax law here, or if it's a sister or brother. So there's different, it doesn't just have to be someone, uh, it doesn't have to be your 401k. If you have uh, an unfortunate death in the family and they have company stock in their 401k, then this can be taken advantage of in that case as well. So moving on, let's do some math. Um, This is super, super easy math. So again, like I said, you don't need to look at the slides here. And by the way, Uh, For those of you who are um, the grammar police, yes, I noticed a typo (laughs) on the previous page. My apologies. Um, But uh, anyway, so uh, the way that things work, again, normal taxation, the the entire 401k, if you roll over your whole 401k, including the company stock to an IRA, then you're going to pay tax at income rate on the entire thing, period. Once it's done, it's done. Now, if you have a stock valued, again, I'm going to say $400,000. That would be taxed at ordinary income because if you have, if you roll it over, obviously it's being it's going from pre-tax 401k to pre-tax IRA, and then let's just say that you pay you're in a 22% income tax bracket, then you would have to pay $88,000 on that stock worth $400,000, whether it's all at once or over time it doesn't really make a difference. So the point is is that you roll the whole whole thing over, it's worth 400 grand. The four hundred thousand dollars. If if your tax rate, say if you're paying twenty two percent, then you would have to pay tax eighty eight thousand dollars. Now, this is where NUA comes in. If instead of just rolling the whole thing over, your whole four hundred one k, including the company stock, what if we split it up? The way NUA works is you take the current market value of the stock, you subtract from that current market value the total value, you subtract from that the cost basis, and that's the NUA amount. So. Let's just say the market value of the stock is four hundred thousand dollars. The cost basis is two hundred. We separate that out. Obviously, easy math. The NUA amount is two hundred thousand dollars. So again, it's worth four hundred. We paid two hundred for it. So our cost basis is two hundred, and the growth is two hundred. The NUA amount is two hundred. The NUA amount is actually going to be taxed at capital gains by affecting net unrealized depreciation. We don't have to pay income tax on that stock, on the on the growth, that is, on the NUA amount. So if we use this example, then obviously $200,000, which is our cost basis, has to be taxed immediately when we take it out at 22%, because that's, let's, in this example, that's our income tax rate. So $200,000 at 22% is $44,000. Then the other $200,000 is only taxed at a preferential rate, which we're using 15%, which would be $30,000. And when you add that up, the total tax that you would pay if you used NUA would be $74,000 if you use this strategy as opposed to the $88,000 that you would have paid if you just rolled the whole thing over and then liquidated it and paid and then had to pay tax on the withdrawals. So obviously a pretty big tax savings there, you know, a $14,000 tax savings that's nothing to shake a stick at. Like I said earlier, if your tax bracket is higher, um, if you make more money, if you have pensions, even in retirement, you could be paying more in tax. And obviously, the higher your tax rate, uh, the more uh, this makes sense to take advantage of. So if you or somebody you know happens to work for a company that is publicly traded here in Columbus, Ohio, or around the country, and they have questions about this, uh, just tell us to tell them to reach out to us via email, go to our website, Uh, set up a phone appointment um, right on our website. You can get access to our calendar and we can do a little analysis of their 401k, look at their company stock, look at the cost basis, confirm that NUA is allowed in their 401k plan. And if so, we can tell them how they might save in taxes as well. Please feel free, like I mentioned, you know, tell somebody you know, if you know anybody and, and you don't have to know if they have company stock in their 401k plan or not. Um, just if you know they work for a publicly traded company that that has a, a stock on the on the New York Stock Exchange or just on an exchange period, so if somebody works for here in Columbus, Ohio, that would be you know Scotts Miracle Grow, Cardinal Health, and so on, um, Worthington Industries, Big Lots, and then Abercrombie and Fitch, the list goes on. But anyway, if you know anybody who works for a publicly traded company that might have company stock in their 401k plan, then without a doubt. Uh, Let them know about this podcast, share this video with them, share the podcast on iTunes with them so that they can be aware of this strategy so that they don't end up making the mistake of rolling their entire 401k plan over. So that's it for today's show. 
Um, if you would like, a set, like to set up an introduction call or a Zoom meeting, like I said, head over to our website to schedule something on our calendar. You can get access to our calendar there. As I always say, there are thousands of podcasts out there, and obviously you chose to give ours a listen today. So thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure again to subscribe on iTunes and YouTube. And remember, you can sign up at LibertasWealth.com to get these updates, as well as other screencast videos and articles delivered directly to your email inbox whenever we release them. Feel free to follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Libertas Wealth. Again, I'm on Twitter at Adam Koch as well as Instagram at Financial Surgeon. And again, thank you so much for joining us once again, and we will see you next time. Thank you for listening to The Cash Podcast with your financial surgeon, Adam Koch. To see any charts or images that were mentioned in this show or to check out additional articles, videos, and other educational resources, head over to LibertasWealth.com.